Thank you. And not just an athlete, I realize he's also in calligraphy and uh, he's also worked with uh, the studio work. Yes, and of all people with Ray Beaker. <laughs> okay. So uh, you have a ceramist, a calligrapher, an architect and an engineer, all in one. So uh, over here, uh, uh, he's also horrible. Okay, now that uh, Subhash has given a very good background of uh, what all the technologies can be and what Auroville can be, I will try and change some of the impressions. Um, there are a lot of uh, uh, friends here who have been explaining a lot about technologies and all that and uh, mine, uh, uh, my presentation is practically uh, the kind of practice we do. Uh, in Auroville and uh, our work has been to kind of bring a lot of these things into uh, mainstream and in kind of making it acceptable to the society uh, in different ways. Uh, I would start with uh, one of this Sri uh, 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 can you switch off this light please, just one or two minutes. This is one of his uh, phrases which, which shows that how diverse even oneness can be and how even the same uh, thing. So, none was apart, none lived for himself alone, each lived for God in him and God in all. Each soulness inexpressibly held the whole. Their oneness was not tied to monotone, it showed a thousand aspects of itself. So, even when we talk about lot of these vernacular technologies and lot of these things which, which we see and uh, learn from, uh, even expressions are equally uh, different. Um, because a lot of people, I mean some of, uh, it's my first time here and I, I think uh, a lot of people don't know where I come from. So basically I am from Savarashtra region uh, and I live right now in South India. So it's a little. Uh, uh, different context I work in than I come from. Uh, so I will go through a little bit of images where actually I come from. This is my village, Drafa, which is in uh, Savarashtra in Jamnagar district. Again a very uh, powerful uh, Savarashtra, Gujarat, uh, Rajput uh, architecture imagery. A lot of, uh, as you can see, uh, role of artisans uh, in architecture in general there. Very uh, strong stone architecture, very local stone which is a kind of a sandstone in that area. A lot of elements we have talked about are very much visible in uh, the and it is a very small village again very typical of Savarashtra, there are many villages but this is one of the, it is about 5000 people. As you can see the colours of our Rajput culture, very strong. Uh, craft based uh, life I come from, very uh, strong imagery of interiors of Rajput house. So this is where I come from and uh, growing up uh, spending a lot of time in holidays amongst all our elders who give wise words all the time sitting on the bazaar, very strong personalities, very green fields around. So this is this has all the typical nice things of a village what you what you talk about. And when you come from such a strong uh, cultural background where even aesthetic sense is pretty uh, high and as an architect or an as artist it is very very difficult to find your own language, how do you uh, come up with, even the product design as you see everything was is in day to day life, it is not something very special which is in museum, it is it's very existing. And uh, not only on a small scale, I did not grow up uh, in the village of Drafa much, I, I grew up in a city called Porbandar. So if you can see the, uh, how timeless this, these things are, even at a smaller scale of a village and then even a little larger scale of a city. This is Jamnagar and Porbandar where again stone architecture took a very uh, royal, very urban kind of a, uh, evolution and uh, these are the things I, I grew up seeing with like you know even heritage, very 
beautiful British influence again, using a lot of artisans' work, but again not taken care of, as you can see in almost everywhere uh, uh, in India today. So the question was how to evolve, how to inspire yourself from these things, you know. This is our town of Porbandar. Again, personality-wise, it's well known for mafias and Mahatma Gandhi both equally. Uh, we have uh, a very strong architecture. This is again very uh, typical of uh, uh, of uh, hot and humid climate. Again, it's on the seashore, so it's not very. Um, it's it's the temperature now goes up to 40 almost. But again, you see a lot of jallies, a lot of uh, stone and wood roofing, uh, beautiful lime floors, almost everything done in sandstone. And uh, this is the stone mines of Porbandar, which, which this is the main building stone of Porbandar, uh, comes from all the mines around there. Uh, we have even started now using those dust mountains you see behind as uh, building material. But again, three to four hundred year old buildings, uh, not very well maintained, but again, very in a, in a much different scale, you can see the flooring technique, the roofing technique, everything was from the local material. We have, uh, it's Porbandar is situated right in, in the midst of a lot of lime, uh, it's like lime built, it is, there's a huge limestone and sandstone around. So the only building material what you have is lime and sandstone, it is not like the bricks are not available. There is no bricks. Uh, cement factories are only in the last 50 to 60 years, which has come up because of the raw material of lime and all. And <coughs> uh, if you look at the, the, you see even in the plinth, there are different kind of stones. Uh, there are uh, like different mines which have different stones. So the corners are used by certain mines of the stone, which are a little uh, uh, denser than the walls are of little softer stone and all. Same thing, again heritage lying in Disarray. But there are, again as Subhash showed, there are skills which are existing in the town. This is again very common of the coastal Savarashtra, where you have this big boat building industry, where they do excellent woodwork, 500 tons, 1000 tons of uh, kind of small ships, done without drawing, without anything. There is absolutely no nothing. It's only hand measured and passed on as a tradition. I also see a huge possibility of architecture, the modern architecture taking these skills into use, no? in using building roofs and design. We haven't got much time, but because I was coming to IIT, I thought these are the slides to show how these technologies, the, because even boat building is also in a you know, problem in those areas, but it's still very much alive in a Savarashtra coast. Even in South India, there are some areas. They have waterproofing technique, everything without any chemicals. So this is where you grew up and then I landed up in Auroville in 1992 and uh, as many of you may know Auroville is, a, is an international township which is in South India, uh, about 40 different nationalities live there and uh, in late 80s when I was, I had finished my uh, uh, civil engineering and I was traveling in India and I, I had heard about Astra and I had heard about Laurie Baker. So I went to Laurie Baker and got stuck there, never reached Astra. <laughs> so a lot of my learning comes from looking at Laurie Baker's work very closely in late 80s and early 90s, before I landed up in Auroville. And uh, so our Auroville again is based on the, the charter of Auroville, of which some of the words are very strong and which made a huge impression on the kind of work we do today. Uh, the idea of Auroville is a common uh, uh, ownership, like we are all under Auroville Foundation, now even Ministry of HRD is our uh, MyBAP, you can say, we come under the Ministry of HRD and uh, so it is basically a place which belongs to humanity as a whole. It's a place where unending education is very important. And I think that is kind of ingrained into the thought of Auroville, that you are constantly learning and evolving. And what also it is that it, it wants to be the bridge between the past and the future. And 
you take advantage of the discoveries from without and within. I think there are these are the few things which which attracted our uh, kind of found gave a direction to the kind of work we do and the materials we work with and the site of material and spiritual research is. So this is I will not go more into the you know, Orville idea but I think anyone of you who is interested can go more on the website or come personally and uh, look at that. I run an architecture office in Oroville. It's a very mainstream architecture office. We call ourselves, we do not call ourselves very alternative, very uh, any any of the box we don't, we are not fitting. But uh, we are about 20 people and uh, about 12 architects. We have seven or eight interns and a couple of artisans who work with us and a few other teams. And our work is kind of dedicated to this kind of interactions which we are here for, where you learn from each other and uh, share what you have. And our conscious effort is to find the building artists in a space in the contemporary Indian architecture. We are not going to debate of what is vernacular and contemporary, but I think what, what today's aspiration is, is basically our, our, our work is to make it a little more aspirational, the kind of materials we work with. And obviously the inspiration comes from the ancient wisdom of building where uh, as somebody already said before the creation that the form is the creation of the spirit and draws all its meaning and value from the infinite spirit. It is not something we don't work the other way around, we don't make forms. Forms is kind of the result of the kind of spirit we work with. Uh, our work is quite a lot of people tell us, oh, you just try a lot of materials. You, some of them say, oh, you do very vernacular buildings. Some of them say you do very contemporary buildings. So it's very, I can say, we are somewhere in between where we have not found a kind of direction. That's why the presentation is, I have called it a fine blending of opposites. We are dealing with the opposites of very old and very new. Orville thinks it's a very, very new idea for something like India where Vasudeva Kutumbakam is the same thing. It's not a new idea. So it is, so we are somewhere in between. And we work a lot with the, the materials right now. What we see in South India is basically uh, the kind of uh, materials we get there. A lot of earth uh, bricks. So I'll take you through some of the images. Like a lot of lime and the, which is used in the plasters. Still not very much alive. Again, going. Uh, this technique is dying out very soon. <coughs> But these are the typical South Indian uh, techniques where oxide floors in many different colors. Very, very popular. Uh, it used to be in the traditional South Indian architecture. The roofing tiles, which are a little different than the other parts of India. Again, the brick size, it has its own size. Achikal bricks, which is used in the Madras terrace roof with the wooden and the lime uh, things. This is one of the images of uh, house. Uh, thing we are restoring in uh, Anagundi. We also use a lot of brick, uh, normal metric size brick in uh, making vaults. We use uh, uh, hollow blocks for jack arch roofs and all that technicalities. I think you have already seen some of them, very similar techniques. Again, filler slab, which uh, we have good pottery skills in that area. Uh, Auroville and Pondicherry area is known for good pottery, terracotta pottery as well as ceramic pottery. So this is the guna, guna tubes, which are which comes from the central uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh area. So we use that quite a bit in our uh, in some of the roofs we do. So basically our architecture draws from the kind of materials which we are working with right now. Pottery, uh, the wood, the thatch, mud, lime, uh, the earth. This is the guna tube roof inside. We use also a lot stabilized earth. We, I personally have built very little with uh, the, the pure earth because I like the stabilization and the acceptability and the ease it gives. Uh, 
So uh, we try and use uh, mostly our buildings have quite a bit of uh, earth element into it. We have been experimenting a lot with the different colors of earth in that area. Uh, and uh, most of our buildings are uh, in and around Oroville and different parts of the India where we work. Like in Gujarat, for example, we are doing something where uh, we are also using uh, the whatever locally is available, we try and use it. <coughs> we try and find the context for the kind of aesthetics we, we work with and However, uh, wherever we try and find that link with the kind of work we want to do with the, and that is our uh, uh, main So our work sometimes look very uh, colorful because we also use a um, uh, lot of handmade uh, uh, touch, like it is water spouts or some uh, murals or these are some water spouts done in ceramics. We do some exposed wick work very different textures and colors of earth we try and do uh, in different parts. We try and reinterpret the jali in uh, some parts. We sometimes use some kind of symbolism to make our earth fall a little more uh, interesting. The local uh, wood, we also, we, we in Pondicherry area, we get a lot of uh, uh, old wood. It, it is still very common to to use old wood. So we try and use a natural color. This is like something which you have been working like uh, all different woods which are available. The natural color itself is quite uh, different. We use a lot of recycled doors and windows in our buildings. Some ceramic, uh, handmade ceramics we use. And we try and find the kind of uh, the meaning, like this one, uh, we have been trying to design a facade for a, a building uh, from the, the in industrial terracotta block which is available, a small block. All different kind of uh, granite dressings and everything we are trying to use for like uh, bathroom instead of industrial tiles where we try to use uh, handmade granite uh, pieces. Uh, these are prefabricated uh, uh, rafters for uh, for the, the tile roof. So as I said, we, we try and see that our design philosophy is kind of a blending of uh, old and new. I will go through some of the images of the buildings which uh, uh, we have done in the, in the past. And uh, here you will see a very uh, kind of mix of very vernacular and very contemporary elements. Lot of recycled materials, granite. Uh, this is a guest house which was uh, done in Auroville. Residences and uh, we, uh, we live in, a, in an area where we can afford, we, we don't have winter. So we, we can afford to have very open spaces, very uh, very transparent kind of buildings we can have. We don't need too much glass, we just need veranda spaces. Uh, so we use a lot of jali also in our uh, 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 houses and oxide flows. Besides uh, the kind of work we do, we, we work with different offices with uh, helping and trying to explore the, the technology transfer. Uh, we use extensively rammed earth because uh, I personally find that to transfer the technology is extremely easy. Rammed earth uh, uh, and as Zubash said, our Orville machine for blocks is very expensive anyways. <laughs> so, so we have our, our, our own version of rammed earth shuttering which is quite affordable for a proper house which when we are doing. Uh, we also do some restoration work. This is one of the heritage hotels we did in, uh, in Pondicherry uh, where we tried and use Atangudi tiles which is a, a tile which is made in South India. 
uh, with lot of uh, old wood ceilings and uh, all. And up, so our interest ranges from very contemporary architectural projects to heritage conservation, uh, where we try and see how uh, to readapt the buildings. We have done some buildings within Orville uh, in Pondicherry. We are doing right now one in Hampi and something in Gujarat, you know. And uh, apart from that, we are also part of a network, the owner-driven rehabilitation. That is where I met Yogananda and uh, Subhash and all a few years ago in the tsunami work. That's how I know them. And so we are part of different networks where, where we work with uh, uh, disaster resistance and disaster uh, uh, mitigation uh, with different organizations. And right now we are also working on the Gujarat ha the government social housing, which is with Hunashala Foundation in Bhuj and uh, people in center in uh, uh, Ahmedabad. Where actually the, the, the reason why I am here would probably, I would bring it because every time we want to use any of these technologies in any of the government projects everywhere, constantly the, the, the codes and, and all the discussion on structures and these and that come, comes into picture. And I think IITs can play a huge role. And in fact, uh, I don't know whether uh, Kiran has told you, you the, but even Sivya Murthy, who, who was in Kanpur and who is now director and who knows all these technologies and all, even he was so hesitant in passing these, like in Savarashtra housing, they are not letting us use rammed earth and stone dust, which is like everybody can have a free access to that. So, even people who are extremely sensitive in IITs, like CVR, and he is like any one of us who is convinced that these things are good. And like Patopedia roof, in Savarashtra, Patopedia roof is the most common you can, uh, you can see, the stone and, and, and pre-casting industry in Savarashtra is so evolved, it's so good. And everybody anyway builds with it, you just have to improve it slightly more. Slightly more, and they are saying, "Oh, give us this code, that code," which is so difficult, you no? Know, because not all of our codes take care of every every local thing. So I think that is what I would like, even in like even in a workshop like this. If IIT takes up, like, okay, we want to make one building, we take the responsibility of making every technique sound, but then IIT should take the responsibility of endorsing it under their name and all, not just say, oh, it's only a demonstration, it cannot be mainstreamized. Because there are a lot of uh, improvements technically, like when I, when I see uh, uh, Professor Rai's work, it's so, uh, like for example, I was, when he was saying about this whole foundation thing, all these buildings, what we are doing, it's only on Ram Earth Foundation. We only do Ram Earth Foundation. And I, I would like to just technically explore a little more and improve that little bit and create kind of a language even within the building itself with pre-casting and all where where we can because we are anyway building i mean i personally as an architecture office we don't really mind we are following what are the basic is codes and this that that we are doing but when you want to do it in a larger scale like you want to do it right now when you want to do it in iit and if you want to set up a building center like in iit or where where all these things can come together uh, these issues like social housing we are not able to use like I am not able, I am doing like in 33 districts out of 30, 13 districts are in Savarashtra. Savarashtra has only stone as the construction material. And terracotta and precasting industry in Savarashtra is extremely evolved because it's a huge business model. It is like all the Patels have made it beautiful business model. Everybody builds with, with precasting there. You just, they just build it badly. You just have to do it nicely, little bit. And government is not ready to uh, endorse it. Just and even our technical committee, we thought technical committee is going to be there as a supporter. So it looked like they were more of examiner. So Alpa Shet, who was there, she's a fantastic civil engineer. 
And she, she told me that you are only talking about all these beautiful spaces, it doesn't mean anything to me in government, that's what she was like provoking. I said it's fine, absolutely fine. But stone dust, in Savarashtra stone dust doesn't even need any stabilization because it is lime inside. So, anyway, I'm just uh, going through the slides of some of our buildings. This is part of our studio. And uh, so we practically build with these materials anyway, whether somebody endorses it or not, because we are a mainstream architecture practice. But it's in social housing, for example, in Gujarat, like what Kiran and I are facing with earth now, because even they stabilized adobe, they didn't let us. They told us very clearly no. And they kept like six months, we are waiting for approval now. And finally, we have made some changes and they've agreed and all. So we have decided, okay, if we have to do it, we'll do it. But then what's the point, you know? Then there's no point in doing a huge design exercise where we studied so much and uh, came up with uh, finally, like they wanted us to just build, build one box, you know, after the whole exercise. These are the, the, some of our ongoing and completed projects. So, as you can see, there are different colors of earth also we try a lot. This is little lighter color which is available, little outside Pondicherry in one of the uh, areas. So, I, I mean, I, I mean, tomorrow's brainstorming, I would actually like to discuss that if anything like this you are trying to build and what is it that, that makes a lot of these things technically much more acceptable uh, to the government project especially, because they are anyway are the single largest agency which can influence the development, you know. We also use a lot of recycled material. You can see we, we are fortunate to find that in South India. Uh, This is one housing project, this is a wastewater treatment plant, the DWATS which uh, this is one house we have, this is one housing we have just finished uh, now in Auroville about for 50 to 60 people. Okay, that is it. Thank you so much. 20 minutes. <laughs> Yes, please. So, uh, you need uh, some uh, these uh, materials that you are using. When you say they are not being uh, allowed by the government, you mean they are not allowed by the building code? No, they. I, I think there are building codes exist, but as Subhash said, that because of institutionalization and all that, we have somehow. But there is, like for example, when the Gurja earthquake happened, and Unashala came to Auroville, and then they wanted to take random technology there in a big way stabilized the earth was used there uh, because Astra, Professor Jacqueline, everybody was like, was endorsing it. But they had to make the code, GSDMA with Gujarat government, the Gujarat State's Disaster Management Authority. They had to make the code themselves. Now for example, right now we are facing, we have documented about 300, 250 to 300 different ways of how people build their houses in Gujarat for Indira Avas Yojana because right now we are the architects, we are three. Uh, we are three organizations who are doing the whole of Gujarat government's uh, Indira Avas Yojana. Uh, and we are in the middle of the thing. We have already finished the documentation, design. Now we are going, prototype construction is starting. The technical committee, that's what I'm saying. Technical committee made and headed by Sivya Murthy and Alpa Sheth. Alpa Sheth is a very mainstream technical expert in the country who is hired by the governments always. Uh, with with all the people, uh, when we because this is how people anyway build. Uh, as Shubha has already explained that it is not dead. Uh, like Patopedia roof in Savarashtra, or wattle and dobe in uh, north south Gujarat, or stagged earth, or masonry, stone masonry in Kutch foundation. These are not dead. These are existing things. This is today available. But government doesn't give you money if you build with that. Government only understands 
simple one brick uh, one pillar whatever however badly done roof however badly done doesn't matter they just think that this is the thing in fact finally after so much of argument and meetings and all and they have agreed now that if you give us any codes from anywhere so of course there are some codes available from ramdath somewhere else no but earth build earth they said no and very strongly these are government things government buildings and we cannot uh, let people just do uh whatever because they think it is not their material they think concrete is their material so alpa for example incidentally she originally comes from savarashtra and uh, be because uh, we had uh, shown a lot of slides of how people because there is one i am not going to that but there is a fantastic innovation we discovered in savarashtra near our village drafa just 20 km from a village where we, even the stone slabs people were finding it very expensive to buy from mines so the people have made their own terracotta slabs and highly technical even ray was surprised like they have made this same size because the roofing is same but it's all terracotta so we propose a whole prefabricated kind of house with the same material and uh, and uh, all the government officers tdos ddos they were totally in our support that yes this is how people build but alpa and cvr and all they said no we will not endorse these designs if you insist on these materials and how sad it is no after doing that whole exercise so that is what i'm saying is i think you can build one beautiful building people will talk about it you will win an award international award then what that is not my interest in in iit that okay one building gets built i think iits should i am a civil engineer i studied structural engineering i went there because i did not want to study architecture i i just didn't learn anything how to do a small building whatever i was interested i only learned from lori baker not from my college so that is the thing you know why iit should not teach any of this why i mean obviously chennai iit then there are like chennai iit has done madras roof into the t beam roof and very interesting work they have done but it's not mainstream yet i mean it's been done i don't know 50 years ago maybe 40 years ago the t beam uh, roof and tile it's very nice beautiful very simple way of doing i think that should be one of the our agenda where we endorse this technology and make it more technical with inputs from like you already have stone masonry experts here there is sanjay chikarmane in iit bombay sitting there he has been talking about lots and an experience is there knowledge is there in the field you gather like 20 experts and you have all the knowledge i mean i am sure anybody like we know ji and sanjay can just tell you where to get their ventilation these that everything they'll tell you i mean they don't need to uh, get somebody's approval for that so i think that is the uh, that is the spirit with which this particular museum should be built not just uh, one demonstration piece but how do you even endorse and maybe you make a special code for indigenous tech indigenous technology there are organizations like hunar shala and several organizations i am sure all the schools of architecture have there are brilliant theses lying in uh, sept and nid and god knows all the institute iits and uh, that's it